The Trump White House has also been working on a military strike against a prominent Iranian leader. The Defense Department tonight has confirmed that the United States has killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. While Soleimani may not be familiar to many Americans, he was the head of Iran's Quds Force. That is an elite unit of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. 702, you're live on Freedom Friday. What's your name? What's your comment? How you doing, Mr. Black? Hey, man, how you doing? I'm good, cool. man. Talk hey, to yo, me. I grew up, around Howard, grew up around Howard University. What's up, fam? Yeah, man, man let me speak on it, man. The, the main problem in this country seems to be the media, man. They're like the right arm of the government. Mm. Now, I know you had your problems with one of the guys from MSNBC, but that seems to be everybody on TV. I can't watch TV or else I'll punch a hole through it. Like, there's nobody on TV where, like, where we have progressives where you could say none of none of the anchors. I mean, they just blew up a guy in Iraq without any warning, without any notice, without the right. How do you kill another country's number two? And going back to what you were saying, imagine they did that to Pompeo, one of the generals here. Why can't the U.S. see that? It's because, man... You got low information, low information, low IQ voters, and then you have a then you have a media that feeds these low IQ because they're all in the same bed. Mm-hmm. I would be nodding my head too if you gave me three million dollars a year. Why 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 doesn't the media ask, hey, what gives you the right to kill him or how are you gonna pay for that? Nah, they go, yeah, he was a bad guy, he had to go. So once you concede that he had to go, who cares who did it? Man, listen, we idolize the worst people in this country, man. No offense, man. You know, so listen, Tim, we probably about the same age. I grew up in the Cypress Hill days, man. Yeah, yeah. So I I used to drive around D.C. I got my nose busted by the police for no reason. There's no, there's no reason to lie. I can't arrest that. I can't get that officer fired. It's been 20, 30 years, 20 years or so. But I'm just saying, like, we idolize police. It's a job. We idolize the military. I spent from 2009 to 2012 in Afghanistan, man. I lost 60% of hearing in my right ear. I got blown up uh, in a, uh, what do you call it, in a roadside bomb. I, uh, thank God I survived that. Uh, I was a contractor. But I worked with the military outside the wire. All right? So uh, I, I survived that. I survived the RPG attack. And, man, we we, we idolize these uh, military people, these soldiers. It's a job, man. I worked with them for three years. These guys used to come in and leave, and I stayed without a vacation. My brother was in the Marines. He got shot in Afghanistan in his knee, in his leg. And we're originally from Afghanistan. We went back there to help our country. But what I saw from these soldiers, man, there's no need to idolize these people. This government, like this propaganda we get fed here in the U.S., that we're the greatest, thank you for your service. No, if you if it's a job you signed up, thank you to, for your service to the teacher. Thank you for your service to the trash man. Mm. Why are we idolizing? I saw some of the worst people in the world, man, in the military. Like, I was in Kandahar province. I put, I'm going to tell you a short story. I know you got a lot of people on here. We got here with an RPG attack. I was with eight U.S. soldiers and a whole bunch of Afghan police. Four people, no, I'm, excuse me, three people died. Two people were seriously injured. I was injured in my ear and all that. I, me and another Afghan, 19-year-old Afghan guy, I escaped during the Soviet times, and I was shot during that time. So I'm 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 okay with dying for my country. I took their soldiers, even though I wasn't a U.S. soldier. I was armed. I was a contractor. I took the soldiers when the when the helicopters landed from Kandahar Air Force Base. They they landed in the wheat fields. The soldiers we were in a we were in an outpost, and the Taliban hit us with an RPG, an inside attack. It was three police officers. They escaped, but these soldiers were crying. I took me and this young guy took their dad to the helicopter. Four times. We made four trips to take these people to the helicopter. The soldiers were crying. The commander thanked me, went back to the base. He accused me.
accused me later on as the MPs were investigating. They accused me of being a Taliban because they said you weren't scared. Why did you take the soldiers out there? Now, this is me trying to help them. And I got so I don't want to hear all this. Uh, thank you for your service. No, thank you for your service to the to the teacher that's educating the kids. That's working out there uh, nine to five. This country sells you nothing but propaganda. Look at this guy that they just let off that uh, 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 Trump party. Like, this country idolizes everything that's bad, man. Everything that's bad. You kill Muslims, you kill uh, brown people, they don't give a damn. They're like, they, as, uh, those aren't even people. How many people get shot? How many black people get shot by the police? Aren't they all lying? They're all saying that it's a big conspiracy. They all got together in a black chat room and said, let's lie on the police. No, nah, but white people will refuse to believe it because the media refuses to present it in the right way. That's true. What all, all every country in the Middle East, when has the U.S. brought any, any, any semblance of peace and freedom to them? They've been 20 years in my country in Afghanistan, and till this day, they can't go outside the wire uh, and walk around freely. What does that tell you? Is that country free? Do they want you there or are you occupying? They drive from one base to another, right? And these people spend their days on a base. They'll stay on a base. They'll send out drones. They'll, uh, I've seen the drones. I was in the control room. So they send the drones out, shoot people. Okay, let's say, they say uh, four people died. They say, all right, mark it down. Three people died. Mm. Man, like what kind of country do we live here? I'm thankful the U.S. let me in here. But, man, I can't take this. Like, I'm just looking for a place to move. I can't I can't get my mind around this. I can't watch CNN. I can't watch stupid bullshit, MSNBC. I can't, this, this, this guy you were having an argument with on Twitter. Like, these are the kind of people that perpetuate this bullshit. They coddle it. And then they want, and then they, they'll hit you with the cudgel of diversity. Oh, he's black. Oh, he's this. Yeah, Clarence Thomas is black, but we don't want we don't need that kind of black in a, if if you black, you don't need that kind of black in the community. Like right. there's a a guy named Majid. He's a, a Muslim that they bring on Fox. We don't need that. I'm Muslim. We don't need that kind of Muslim in the Muslim community. That's that fake diversity shit. I'll vote I'll I'll go along and I'll vote for Bernie. I think he's the best dude. Wow. But man, I'm so I'm so disheartened by watching this bullshit. Just constant killing, man. Like, what about, Tim, did they even see? So they killed this guy. They killed this guy. They killed eight other people. What about the families of those eight other people? Absolutely. What is the anchor going to ask? Like, how do you kill eight civilians? Like, you killed ten people. You mentioned one person. So it's okay to kill eight others. Like, they don't have a mom. They don't have a dad, man. This happened in Afghanistan every day, man. It worked on my psyche. Like, I was about to explode. And then they come back home. You come into BWI airport, and I would see these same garbage people that I was with on my third year when I finally left. I left with the same people that I used to work with for maybe about two months. Garbage people. One of the guys is also from Maryland. We flew into BWI together, came on with his uniform. They're hugging. Oh, like, thank you for your service. I'm like, why? Why? Why not figure out the whole story? Like, what is he doing? It's a job. The same, the same thing with police officers. It's a job. Why do we give them the benefit of the doubt over the black man who got killed or the white uh, or, or the lady that got killed in Texas? Man, this country is a bunch of bullshit. We got low IQ, no information, voters. And the only hope is some of this progressive media, man, like yourself. You know, we got TIT, Cop, all these people that got me into it, man. But even that's not enough because this is a small bubble. But when you get your head out of this bubble, all you see is this bullshit. This is bullshit. I got to leave it there, you can't brother. Walk anywhere, man. I got to leave it there, man. We got to keep it moving. But, man, I love you. I, I love your comment, man. It means so much to us to, to hear your side of the story, brother. Thank you so much for calling, all right? Man, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. You got it, brother. It was a stunningly, um, can I say, stupid uh, and counterproductive move on the part of the United States. And we're going to pay the price for this. And the people of the Middle East will pay the price for this 
for years to come. I think the media is, uh, like I say, you know, uh, propaganda.